Hey there, personal health and wellness. Welcome to our first module and our first module content. I want to begin by talking about what health, what wellness are, and I hope that this is some um, uh, basic review for you from something in the past. But if not, uh, and this is brand new, then I hope that you grab on to some key terms. And that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with this first word, health. What is health? And we have to begin by kind of conveying this into the direction of Health being not just merely the absence of disease, but rather a state of well-being. And you know this because you probably had a stomach virus and you felt like absolute trash. And your only desire is to not feel that way and not be throwing up anymore, right? So you've dealt with this in some way or another. And you only really appreciate health when it's taken from you. And so we want to really impress upon you that just the absence of disease is not what we're after. We're after complete physical, mental, and social well-being. And we've got a few more to add on to that here in just a second, and I can't wait to get to that part. But before we do, let's define what wellness is. Wellness is the state of being in good health, especially as an actively pursued goal. That means you're going after it. You're doing things in your life that mean that you are approaching wellness as a pursuance that means you're going after it right so we have to consider are we really looking at these things that we're about to talk about as something we're going after let me just go ahead and give you one more while we're here and that is continuum a continuum is a continuous sequence in which adjacent elements are not perceptibly different from each other although the extremes are quite distinct. And this happens to be one of the best definitions that I've ever encountered when we are looking at health as a study. Because one thing that happens to us over time is a very distinct difference in the way we are from our youth to our elder years. And that's not just a physical thing that we can see but also things that are on the inside of us, even into our minds and our brains, right? And we know that because we all have been through youth and we all know someone older. And so we've seen those changes happen. We know they're coming, but do we always actively pursue ways to optimize our health? And so this word continuum is going to pop up again here in just a few moments. Let me now take you into our first dimension of health. And what we have to understand is that there are eight dimensions that we're going to cover in this video today. And number one is our physical wellness. And this is the one that we typically think of when we consider health. What is it that we're doing with our bodies? But it's more than just our outward appearance, our outward physical shape. It has something more to do with the way our body functions and it also has to do with our strength and our endurance. It also talks about here in this definition, do we have resistance to disease as well as impairments? And that is a key indicator about our physical health because that tells, our, that tells us a lot about how our body is able to adapt to many things in the environment, many things that we're gonna encounter. Also, just to the stresses of the day and the fatigue that it may cause. Another thing that I wanna point out here is that there are three larger indicators of our physical wellness. And number one is physical activity. And if we participate in physical activity regularly, how it influences our physical wellness. Number two is our diet. And by diet, I don't mean that you're on said diet. I mean like a study or an observation of what it is that you consume for your energy source. Number three is your sleep health. And we're going to talk about sleep and you're going to get some email ranting from me very soon about sleep. But sleep is an incredibly important component to our physical wellness. And that is the focus of this course. But we don't want to just study these three things. We want you to integrate the other seven aspects or dimensions of wellness as well. So where I want to start with that is at social wellness. Social wellness is simply our ability to connect with a deep and satisfying interpersonal relationship. That means how many friends do you have? 
I don't really want you to talk about or even think about at this point the 2,000 followers you have on Instagram. What I want you to think about are, again, deep, satisfying connections that you have. Probably more realistically is to think that you have three or four people in your life. That is the group of people that you're closest to, that you share and you basically endure this life with, right? They speak life into you. They speak goodness into you. And that kind of brings me into another thing right here is that people who don't have those deep connected relationships have a high correlation to suicide, meaning they're lonely and they long for it, but they don't have it. And so one other aspect of social congruency uh, or social health is to look at the Harvard Medical Study of Adult Development. And I've linked a video to a TED Talk, and I hope you watch it. It's not required, but I hope you go down from this video and you watch it because it's an incredible video that talks about a true study of a lot of guys over a lot of years and what social connectedness has done with their life. One of the other items that I have listed here is a book that I have become a big fan of, and it's from Dr. John Townsend. And I hope that you add this to your Amazon cart tonight and get it today. Uh, because this book right here speaks very well about the nutrition of good social relationships. And Dr. Townsend simply says that instead of having food for our nutrition for social relationships, we need communication. And what does communication do for us? Well, it allows us to be present, to convey good, to provide reality, and to call each other to action. And those are just the simple nutrients that come along with communication as the carrier of our nutrition. Another mention that I would like to have here is of Aristotle. Aristotle related relationships in three ways. He said you're going to have a relationship that's based off of utility, meaning that they're good for a business position or something that will do you some good, but it's not going to last very long after the business or the service is complete. Another aspect of a relationship that Aristotle defined was for pleasure. And we do have relationships that are built strictly around pleasure. Fishing buddies, mountain bike buddies, running buddies that are there because you both share common interests and you enjoy doing things. But then there's this other one and seemingly the most important and that is this. If you can see the good in a person and you want more of that, then that relationship is going to be the best relationship. Do good is really kind of the purpose of our relationships. Next is your intellectual wellness. What I have to really consider in intellectual wellness is that you're already doing that. You're enrolled in a college class, right? So you're pursuing your intellect. And I'm really pumped that you chose this class to do that with. But this is using your brain to meet life's challenges. And that's going to be something that you need to think about doing your whole life. You see, we are learning machines. Our brains have an enormous plasticity that we haven't even quite understood yet. In fact, it was only just a few years now that we began to understand the capacities of our brains. We used to think that there was a limit to the neuronal abilities, but now we're finding out that that's just not true, that our brains really don't have a limit. And it's incredibly exciting because this is what I hope you pursue long after this class is over. And I hope that you do it for health reasons. We live in an incredibly informationally driven society. It's the most we've ever had in history. The internet has changed everything, right? You know that. And in fact, we have to sometimes go in and just turn it off. And I actually have a discipline that I won't look at my cell phone after six o'clock because I know that there's just too much information out there and I'm trying to let my brain kind of calm down. So that's just one discipline that I have just to kind of disconnect from all this information. But we have to harness it and use it for good. That's the purpose of this. Another side of this is our emotional wellness. 
we have to understand that there is a time for and, and a place for an appropriate expression of our emotions and responses. I've included my favorite emojis. These are like expression or uh, emotion 101 right here. You're happy, you're stressed, you're angry. Like we all go through this and sometimes we, it, it happens in 30 seconds worth of time, right? So we know that that's going to occur. Another emotion, though, that I want you to kind of consider as we move through the way we're going to balance our health is gratitude. Yeah, it's an emotion because think about when someone does something incredibly good for you and how happy that makes you and how you want to just thank them, typically by giving something to them, right? But gratitude is an emotion and it's an emotion that i hope that you would join me in saying this is an area we want to improve i tell my kids all the time i need you to have an attitude of gratitude and when they do the whole house is better next on my list is uh whoops, skip one sorry next on my list is environmental wellness this is four things number one your stewardship the way you steward the earth's resources things that are directly around you uh, in your local surroundings, but also think globally. There are things out there that we need to start stewarding better. I'm not going to go into a lot of those specifically because I feel like that talk could go on for a long time. But you know what I'm looking at here. Uh, you've heard the debates, um, and I'm just going to encourage you to think about what can I do locally uh, with myself? Because you can't change other people. And I'm going to use that as a theme through this whole class. You can't change other people's behaviors, but you can look in the mirror and change that one. Right? So how do you start? That's the most important thing. Change you. Don't worry about changing everybody else. But again, we want you to understand how to protect your resources. The resources that are sustainable. And you'll notice that I have this picture of this mom and her kid and they're out in their garden and they're doing their farm thing. They're looking after their resources. And I'm going to talk a little more about farming when we get into nutrition later. But you know, only 2% of Americans are participating in farming now. And that's a tiny number. And it's something that we have to look at and think, my goodness, is this influencing my health? And I'm going to tell you, it is. It absolutely is. How can we improve that? Well, we have to have environmental health and wellness. My last specific wellness dimension that I want to cover in this talk has to do with spirituality. And I want you to know that I'm not coming at you and saying that you have to be religious. Those are two different things. What we're looking at here is your appreciation for your life's purpose, its meaning, and its value. And if you use religion to help you understand that and improve that for personal growth, that's awesome. If you don't, uh, what are your beliefs? And how do you use those beliefs into your life's purpose, its meaning, and its value? And what I will tell you is that regardless of your current belief system, you're the one who has to make sure that that's right. And with that, belief, whether that is in God or you're an atheist, you have to know that with that, do you get strengths? Do you draw on those strengths? Do you have opportunities from that? What about your weaknesses from that exact spiritual practice? And then are there any threats? Maybe that's some things that you should think about and then put that towards how is that making my life's purpose, my life's meaning, and my life valuable. And especially relating that back into the other dimensions. So with that being said, I'll share with you real quick just a small little part of what I do. Number one, I exercise for my physical well-being. That's the thing that I'm going to do and talk to you a lot about. Number two, for my close relationships, I participate in a small group. I have about four families that I'm trying to do life with and they are my closest friends. They know more about me than anybody else on this earth knows. And so I use them to develop my social wellness. For intellect, I'm a lifelong learner. I love to learn. I love to read books. I love to listen to podcasts. That's something that's important to me for my own intellectual health. For emotions, 
my goodness, I can't tell you how many times I've failed here. I'm really going to have to go vulnerable with you and tell you this is my worst, worst, single worst. Can I emphasize that more? Health dimension. I'm terrible at it. I explode on people when they don't deserve it. And I bet that you probably have some idea of people who do that. But I'm working on that. I'm trying to become intentional with my emotional distribution. And that's what I've written here. My spiritual practices consist of daily and weekly worship. Things that I try to do, meditating, but I actually pray every day. That's my spiritual practice of choice. That's what I do. Environmentally, um, listen, I'm going to remain rural. I love LaFleur County. I love these mountains and hills that surround me. That's where I want to be. That's where I thrive. And I hope that you see the benefits of where you live and what benefits you can give to other people by staying in that community and doing good things there. I also really focus on trying to get litter picked up. That's a big deal to me. Environmentally speaking, it's a big challenge because there's lots of it, especially in LaFleur County. But we can continue to pick it up. And then the last thing is I like to recycle. I really do. I'm going to go ahead and put those plastic containers away in plastic bins and try to get those recycled. Same with paper. It's just a practice that I'm going to do. So I leave you with this. Occupational and financially. I've got an old video with my a whole video uh, about these two topics with my wife, who is an accountant and incredible at both of these things. And I hope that you tune in and look at that here in just a little bit. Go ahead, click down to the next quiz, which is over health dimensions. Take that, then watch the financial video and kick that one in too. Hope to see you soon. Let me know if you have any questions. See you later.